When are you going to learn that not everything is a dick joke? When are you going to learn that? Like seriously. You... Do you realize you do, you do that? What? You make everything into a dick joke. I am the god of sliding into DMs. Don't you know that already? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, do you I'm just selling it. Do people see what I deal with? bed later and get up earlier. Snarky. Ah. Yeah, we should get up way earlier. I mean, fuck it, let's get up at like 2.30. Be in the gym by 2.45. So that means you're hitting the pre-workout at like 2.15. Nah. Maybe we just don't sleep anymore. We just stay up all night long. That new bed you got's really great in bed. dumbbell bench press and the reason dumbbell bench press and bench press in general are important but the reason I've gotten away from doing barbell bench press is because a dumbbell bench press makes you work a little harder it makes you try to keep your hands even um, you have to do more of the work to lift the weight in my opinion and you don't get the shoulder strain in a dumbbell that you get in a barbell and frankly, this is Planet Fitness, and you're not allowed to lift heavy weight. So we get it. We get it. So yeah, that's why I much prefer dumbbell bench press, just because the shoulder strain, the the what is it, dumbbell bench press forces your hands to work independently. Um, so there's a lot more mind muscle connection, in my opinion. So I just prefer it. And I think again, the main thing is I'm 44 years old, and I don't want to get injured. So I like the fact that dumbbell bench press doesn't strain my shoulders as much.
Ah. Just having trouble stretching my chest. It's bizarre. I guess that means you got a good workout. I have a big chest pump, but range of motion and whatnot. Team Plus One to speak to a company claim center specialist. If you would like to ignore the risk and be placed on our do not call list, please press two. Oh, I'll press one with pleasure. Let's have some fun. These people have called me like 10 times. Hello? Thank you for holding. My name is Danny. Um, I'm here to assist you with your Google listing. Am I speaking to the owner of Monty Group? Uh, yes, but our name is Tad Stevens. Bait and Tackle. Oh, okay. Alrighty. Um... You actually were supposed to be on the do not call list. Many, right? many but, but many times you guys call me like every day. And I enjoy talking to you because you're nice people, but you're a pain in my ass at this point. Yeah, yeah. I, let me uh, let me put that on the uh, do not call list. Will you promise? Because that would be swell. You're like awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a nice yeah, you, you too. <laughs> Google has called me. They're not Google. It's actually a business trying to make you think they're Google. But these idiots have called me like 10 times, literally 10 times, right? And I have told this guy every time, hey, man, you know, this isn't going anywhere, essentially. So the first three times he called me, I said, hey, can you take me off your list? Okay. He calls me again. So then, of course, Ted Stevens has to come out and make an appearance. So he called me again today. And I'm not exaggerating. Tenth call, eleventh call, maybe. So as you heard, the guy finally says, oh, you're supposed to be on the do not to call list. Yeah, no kidding. So why did you call me today? I hate solicitor calls, but I've learned to have fun with them. And if you watch this vlog for any amount of time, you've probably seen three or five calls from solicitors. Now I actually look forward to answering the phone. Thank you for holding them. My name is Eric. I'm here to assist you with your Google listing. Am I speaking with the owner of Monty Group PLLC? Yes, but we use a different name. We don't call it the Monty Group. Malik, like M-A-L-I-K? Malik? I don't know who that is. I, my, my name is Tad Stevens. So what is the name of the company, sir? It's the Monty Group, but the business name is Tad Stevens Bait and Tackle. Ted. Ted Stevens. Tad. Tad. T-A-D as in dude. Okay, Tad Stevens Bait and Tackle. That's correct. Thank you. Okay, um, it says here that you actually do have one, so I'll take you off the list and you have a great day. Oh man, that's it? Damn it! <laughs> Google called me again. We get it. Obsessed. They called me again. Ted Stevens over here. Hey, how are you? Good to see you, friends. Um, so, it is 6.36 at night. On Wednesday night, to be specific. And as you can see, I'm driving down the 101 freeway in Scottsdale. And I haven't eaten since breakfast, because we did an open house at the Million Dollar Flip today. 
And then we had afternoon meetings, getting ready for Project X to launch on Monday. So I thought I would take a little time to update you on Project X. So it is now the Monty Show, and it's on 1580 The Fanatic in Phoenix, noon to three, but we also own the show. And a lot of people have said, okay, well, what does that mean that you own the show? That means that we are able to keep all of the ad revenue that we make from hosting the show. Um, and the radio station is our partner in that. And we don't work for anybody. We, and you know, I always use the word entrepreneurs, but essentially, if, if you know what an independent contractor is, we sort of are that. I'm also running part of the station. I'm the program director, but there's a bunch of other convoluted verbiage in there that says I do a bunch of other stuff, but um, the good news is it is, you know, our business. We own it. We don't have to worry about, you know, what the program director thinks or what the general manager thinks or what does corporate think or it's what we think. It's what we want to do. It, you know, one of the most, if you're in Salt Lake, you know, one of the big controversies when I was at KFAN is one year corporate said, well, you guys aren't going to Pac-12 Media Day. Well, I don't have to worry about that. I guarantee you. In a market like Phoenix, where we have U of A and Arizona State, we're going to Pac-12 Media Day every July. Um, that's what I'm talking about. We're going to do what we want to do when we want to do it. It's really exciting. That launch is Monday, tomorrow. Uh, we're having a big meeting with all of the staff at the radio station to be introduced to them and kind of let them know our plan and how we're going to work things. And it's a pretty big deal. It is a pretty big deal, so I'm really excited about it. Uh, but I haven't eaten since flipping like 10.30 this morning, so I'm on eight hours without any food. By the way, that's not nutritional. That's not good. So that's we are gonna go home and make taco salads, but it, at this point, I can tell you, it's not, a, it's not gonna be a productive nutritional day. It, I would dare venture to say there's no way to make it a productive day because I'm just throwing turkey meat everywhere. Uh, <laughs> the point is, um, there's no way to make it a nutritional day. When you haven't eaten for this long, you can't go eight hours without eating. So there's really no way to recoup that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna eat really well. I'm sorry. Oh, I I've right. completely I completely destroyed the man's meat. Anyway, I'm gonna do the best I can. I'm gonna have salad. I'm gonna try and stay really low carb because you know now it's seven o'clock. I'm probably not gonna eat until 7:30, 7:45. Just a minute. You're not hitting the carb macro for today. Just I will not hit the carb macro for today because if you look at my macros, um, and I'm looking at my app um, you look at my macros today and there's really no way to spin it right now and I don't know how well you can see this I know it's always difficult to see it but today that's that's essentially where I'm at carb wise and it's not good so that says 39 grams of carbs 70 grams of protein not good at all. 21 grams of fat. Now we're gonna dial all that up because I'm gonna have a bunch of vegetables and a bunch of beef. So it'll be fine. The other thing I'm woefully short on today is water. If, I, if I'm honest with you, and I sit here and I say, well, how much water have I had today? 48, 56, somewhere around 80, maybe. Maybe, if I'm lucky. Um, so that's a real problem that we're gonna have to fix. So um, so here are my macros for the day. A lot of people ask me what my macros are. Um, and again, my Lose It app tells me exactly what my macros are. I don't have to guess, I don't have to calculate, I just punch in what I eat, and it tells me that today um, I took in a frustrating 1,860 calories. Can you see that right there? 1,860 calories. 
out of 2400. So that's not great. The macros themselves look like this. See, it gives me it in a pie chart form. That purple is protein. The tan is carb and the green teal is fat. Um, so then in the Lose It app, all you have to do is tap the pie chart and it gives you the numbers. Um, I took in 68.6 grams of fat today. 21.9 grams of that was saturated. That's excellent. Um, I'll take that every single day. My goal uh, for fat on a daily basis uh, fat intake um, is 95 grams or below. 69 is probably a bit low, to be honest with you. I really try not to get under 80 because your body actually needs fat to lose fat. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, my carb intake today is 69.6, .6, way too low. My sugar intake was 12 grams of sugar. That was it, fantastic. But that carb number needs to be much higher uh, than, than that. I need under 150 carbs. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, carbs are bad. You tell us all the time, carbs are bad. Yes, 500, 800, 1,000 carbs a day probably is not good for you. It's all about what that carb is and what time of day you take it in. I really need to be pressing 150 carbs a day and I need 95% of those carbs to be before three o'clock. It's that simple. Today I fell short because I didn't eat after 10.30 and then I ate dinner at seven o'clock-ish, way too late. Um, my protein today was 233, believe it or not. That's actually almost perfect. I want 266 grams. I take two protein shakes a day. I eat a protein bar every day. Uh, right before I go to bed now, I'm gonna have casein, a casein protein shake because casein, as I've told you a lot, is a long lasting protein. It takes a lot longer for your body to process it so it helps you get through the night um, and it makes a huge difference. When I take casein at night, I'm not hungry. It's great. So the bottom line is, I didn't have enough carbohydrate today and I waited way too long to eat. You need to eat no more than every four hours, I would say. I went eight and a half hours without eating. Not very good. Tomorrow's a big day. Um, we have a big staff meeting. So Project X, the Monty Show, gets announced to the entire staff at the radio station tomorrow. Um, Jake and I will be introduced and I have to tell everybody what we're going to do, and it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So, and then Monday, we're back on the radio Monday. we back with the vlog. The, the vlog is going to get crazy. We're going to have access to so much more unique, dynamic content. I'm really looking forward to that. It's an exciting time for us. So tomorrow, um, we'll, have some, we'll have some unique content. I don't know why. We're going to try and vlog some of that meeting. We have to be careful with that, but um, yeah, it'll be fun. Tomorrow's a big day. Tomorrow morning we're going to work out. Um, tomorrow is upper back and shoulder day, so that'll be fun. Got to get some core and cardio in. I got to try and eat. It'll be awesome. Hey, thanks for watching. Thumbs up. Uh, subscribe. We had a huge week of subscribers this week. I really appreciate you guys watching this vlog every day because um, we couldn't do it without you. So thanks for spending your time here and we'll see you soon. Peace.